This is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I remind you, you've got to fight the fights you can win. Welcome in. We are live on this Thursday from a different locale for me at Fort Stewart, Georgia, as a, a day after I kind of, you know, spewed all my energy into uh, the Atlanta Falcons and Deshaun Watson. I had to come down to Fort Stewart for uh, some military medical procedures to go through, just our annual physical in short. So a little bit of a different location. Apologize for the uh, audio quality or the video quality, but certainly appreciate you guys Baron with us. Give us a follow here on Locked On Atlanta at Locked On ATL. Of course, I'm at Mark Zinno, M-A-R-K-Z-I-N-N-O. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us that thumbs up every time you see one of our videos. We certainly appreciate all the love and support. We've got a lot to do today, so let's get right to it here uh, and start with what has gone on on the PGA Tour uh, and the Live Tour and what is happening. You know, we, we talked earlier this week, guys, about morality in sports and everybody being upset about you know, players going to this to the Saudi tour because of the Saudis' horrible, you know, human rights record and yada, yada, yada. It, it runs into Deshaun Watson morality in sports. Well, this gets back to the heart of sports, and that's pure money. Um, because the PGA today has now decided that they are suspending all 17 players taking part in the first live golf tournament. Uh, 17 members who are competing in this inaugural event are all suspended. Uh, players who resigned their membership before starting the Live Golf event began, held outside London today, are no longer eligible to compete in tour events or the President's Cup. Now, the PGA is sort of taking this action in response to what they are starting to see is a number of high name, really big players defect the PGA for the Live Tour. As I said at the top, you got to fight the fights you can win. And I don't know that this is a fight that the PGA can win. I have a lot of concerns about this move, and I'm not sure it's the best move for the PGA going forward. Because the PGA can't do nothing, and they're really going to catch 22. They can't do nothing, right? They can't just sit there and act like this live tour doesn't exist. But going down this road may actually hurt them more than help them. There may be more harm coming to the PGA than actual aid in doing this. At the end of the day, players who are deciding to leave the PGA Tour for the Live Tour are doing it based off of one decision and one decision alone, money. Now, what the PGA could do is change their structure. What the PGA could do is change the way they pay out people. What PGA could do is not turn aside the handful of the biggest earners of why the PGA is so successful, the biggest name players who everybody buys tickets to go see and everybody goes to these events to go see and, and compensate them for it accordingly. Or they can go down this road of trying to punish across the board for people who are leaving. I would argue that take a player, and I'm, uh, let me think, Tony Finau, okay, who has yet to win a major, um, has come close a couple of times, has been a really solid, consistent golfer on tour. The reason he leaves the PGA for the Live Tour is based off of one thing and one thing only, money. That's it. You're not preventing them from making more money. You're not hitting these players where it hurts. They can still play in the majors, or at least three of them, right? They can play in the U.S. Open. They can play in the Open, the British Open. Or they could play in the Masters PGA events. Well, the PGA event is the PGA Championship. So they can play in three of the four majors, and that's fine. They can still win one and be called a major champion. That's fine. The one thing the PGA can't, Tour can't guarantee them that these other players can get guaranteed on the Live Tour is money. That's it. It's that simple. Like, the PGA has to go out and change the way they think. This is a very old-school draconian... I'm the parent, you do what I say kind of mentality, instead of looking at this in a transformative way and going, okay, we can't compete with what they're offering. 
but let's make it at least a little more appetizing for people to stay. And I think that's where the PGA is missing the mark on this. And, and don't confuse this, guys. This isn't like, you know, the USFL or the AAF or the XFL creating a separate football league. Because it's not like that at all. Because they're not getting NFL players to leave the NFL to go play in their league. This would be like a whole bunch of NFL players leaving the Seahawks, the Rams, the Chargers, the Cardinals, the Ravens, the Giants, and starting their own league. All those teams just starting their own league. It's almost like what we're seeing in college football where you're going to end up with four power conferences and that's it, and the NCAA can go get bent. And if the NCAA isn't watching what's going on right now between the PGA and Liv and going, we better do something fast or we're going to lose control over all of this, I can't help you because that is the closest thing I can think of that really would sort of have a similar ideology here. The PGA should be thinking differently, not be thinking about punishing. They should be thinking about incentivizing. How do I incentivize people to stay? Eliminating them from the Corn Ferry Tour, uh, preventing them from playing in the RBC Canadian Open that is going on this weekend, even the President's Cup. It, it, it doesn't hurt them. It doesn't. They still get to play in three of the four majors. They can still play in the Ryder Cup. They can still play in, in all of these other events that matter to them. So I'm not sure what the PGA is thinking that they're going to accomplish by going down this road other than almost threatening people to stay for less money. You know, when when, <laughs> when we were uh, – when I was deployed overseas, we always kind of held to a mantra like of doing stuff that people may frown upon, right? Like the attitude was, what are they going to do? Send me home, right? Like if I screw up, what are they going to do? Send me home? No, you know you weren't sent home. You were staying there for your full entire year of your deployment. So what the hell did it matter? It's almost like the same thing. PGA golfers are going to go, what are they going to do? Not guarantee me money? That's already the situation anyway. You're not guaranteed money. So. I'm not sure what the PGA is thinking, and I don't know the road that they're going down, but this certainly isn't the one that I would have expected them to go down because, in reality, they are fighting a fight that I don't think they can win. They are, they are picking a fight that they are going to be on the wrong side of, and they're approaching this the wrong way. Instead of thinking transformatively, they're thinking archaically, and it's going to come back to bite them, and that's a problem for them. All right, coming up next, uh, Falcons OTAs. Final one before we get to mini camp. Some thoughts there as we go forward. And how much time will Desmond Ritter see under center? That is next right here on A to Z on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube. And wherever you get your podcast, you search Locked On Sports Atlanta.